Hi everybody, Tom here on Joy and Route. Thanks for joining me on the channel here today. I'm at Turtle River State Park in North Dakota, which is just a little west of uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base. And uh, not surprisingly, that's just uh, about 15, 20 miles west of the city of Grand Forks, which is right on the North Dakota-Minnesota border. And I've found the Conservation Corps dam that was probably built uh, probably over a hundred years ago now. I don't know if this is really a dam. <laughs> it's kind of more of a rapids. But it's a beautiful little spot here. There are lots of kids here today. Looks like there's some sort of an event going on. Maybe just a day camp. But a real nice facility to, um, you know, bring the kids to and enjoy a picnic. It's coming up on noon today. It's a uh, Monday. And, uh, here in North Dakota, the temperatures are in the mid-70s with uh, low humidity, as you can tell by the sky. It's nice, nice and clear and blue, which is a departure, apparently, from what it's been up here lately. It's been hot and humid, so I think everybody's kind of enjoying the um, milder weather. So just out on the trails, but I'd take you along a little bit, see what's up. Well, I had the camera off just walking up the road here in order to get back to the trail. I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I'm going to have to take measures to mute the audio in a part of that last segment. Because one thing that I noticed as I was uh, kind of walking away from the area is that that large group of kids and their adults had a boombox playing and the song Blue on Black was playing. And, um, you know, I've seen this before. It's, uh, it's, it seems almost draconian to me that uh, copyright situations have gotten to where they are. That even a few notes of a song that are uh, probably recognizable, and even though, you know, it wasn't me that tried to put the music into the song. It was just ambient noise in the scene that I happen to be passing through. That still is something that Google slash YouTube will say, oh, no, no, no. If you have that music there, uh, we certainly aren't going to let you monetize the video. Um, and instead, we'll pay you know, whoever had the mechanical or composer's rights to that song. I don't know if it was the original artist that was doing the blue on black thing. Um, I mean, my Night at the Speedway video could not be monetized because I included the Star Spangled Banner in the video. 
And I wanted to. I did that on purpose. I, I, I could see no particular reason why that should have been an issue. But apparently Jordan Sparks, who was the person who sung that particular version of the Star Spangled Banner, is monetizing our national anthem to her own game. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta sigh and say WTF, right? I don't know. Look at these trails here at uh, Turtle River State Park in North Dakota. They're just beautiful. One of the park rangers told me that this is an excellent and very pretty trail to come and take a look at. And in particular, the dam that we saw just back there. But what about going forward? Um, what's next for Joy and Route? I know there was a, a tremendous pause there as I was dealing with some other things. Um, and I guess I could very briefly do a recap on that. So, you know, I got back to Wisconsin right around April 1st. Let's just make sure I'm going the right way here. The Keystone Bridge. We could go to the Keystone Bridge. I think that kind of takes me back to the road. Uh, but I want to stay on the trail. Um, and while in Wisconsin, I dealt with a rental turnover. And, um, but then I also needed to just hang around waiting for uh, new tenants to move in and be there to, you know, take care of the rental turnover, the painting and carpet cleaning and what else, whatever else needed to be done. Thankfully, the previous tenants did a great job of cleaning, so I really appreciated that. And uh, they got uh, the vast majority of their security deposit back, so I'm sure they were pleased by that. Um, so the new tenants move in, that was a June 1 event, so it was basically from April to June 1, uh, so all of April and all of May, I was just kind of hanging out back home and doing some stuff. Uh, little projects around the house, not too many of them, frankly. Uh, and one of the things that I was doing is continuing to work on a software development project that I've been working on that I call Nomad Accounting. And uh, what it is, is a full double entry accounting system that uh, I can use in place of, uh, you know, the more commercial products out there that I don't really have much control over in terms of how they work and what would work best for me. So I decided I know how to do this stuff. So I'm just going to code up a double entry accounting system for myself. So far, it's going really well. Uh, maybe there will be a series on how that got developed and its features and everything else. But that won't be on this channel because <laughs> that would like probably bore you all to tears. Uh, you're not that audience. So I'll do that uh, on maybe another channel that I'll spool it. If you're interested in that, drop me a comment. Um, but then I needed to go to a meetup in um, Elkhart, near the Elkhart, Indiana area, down by, down by where Embassy Specialty Vehicles lives and creates um, the Dolphin RV line, of which Joy is a member. And because I needed them to take care of a couple of uh, warranty issues, right? I met 
coming up on year two on the warranty and I'm passing 20,000 miles on the chassis so I've got another you know like 16,000 to go on the vehicle you know base warranty and a little more than a year to go on the embassy warranty so anyway I'm gonna make sure that everything gets taken care of if any luck things won't be a problem again one thing however was and this was a real disappointment um, apparently the refrigerator manufacturer that embassy had been using partly due to supply chain issues during the you know the the thing um, and I think they they chose wisely but sadly uh, some of them uh, showed up as being uh, incapable of performing its more or less basic function which is keeping things uh, w within a safe cold range and so the refrigerator it turned out was uh, I don't know not staying within the FDA guidelines for uh, safe operation of a refrigerator and embassy had seen this on a few units and um, so uh, they did some checks while I was there just to verify that yes it was not maintaining temperature as um, expected and uh, so they went ahead and swapped it out and once that was done and the other work was done um, I went ahead and went uh, back to I didn't go back to I went over to the um, embassy meetup at EB's Pines which was a lot of fun meeting up with uh, some uh, other embassy owners and that have become friends over the past uh, couple of years as we either waited for our embassy or now that we have them we're kind of finding ourselves out on the road and and still meeting up and that sort of thing so you're kind of buying into a family when you um, purchase an embassy RV so that's kind of cool but um, when I got back to Wisconsin uh, it almost immediately became apparent that the new replacement refrigerator had failed. And I literally had to wait uh, for a few more weeks due to some other things going on back home before I could once again go back down to Elkhart, Indiana, where they replaced it again. And while I was there that time... Um, I also made the decision to let them go ahead and install a max air fan on Joy. We're approaching Joy right now. There she is. And uh, she's looking kind of bright in the sun. I'm going to extend the um, selfie stick up as high as I can go and then you could probably see that max air fan it's uh, not running right now so that's its cover is closed but uh, boy it has made a world of difference in uh, temperature control and airflow and all those fun things that uh, go into making uh, life in a class brv comfortable just going to sit here on the picnic table here for a little bit continue this little chat uh, if I can get the tripod legs down uh, let's see that will work okay and maybe what I'll do is actually stop and turn it around so that you're looking at me not the forest and 
with me just in that little window here. Stop! Yeah, so all the way back down to Elkhart for a couple of things. And while I was there, ran into the remnants of... What was the name of the hurricane that came and it hit like Houston? Um, uh, can't remember the name of it. I'll put it up on the screen. But uh, got dumped on. Just It just rained like, wow, uh, so much rain in just a single night. And then I, I was uh, going to leave the following morning. And uh, I was driving down uh, county roads and whatnot that were, like, literally underwater. So I had to be really careful and just sort of take the detours wherever the, it said that the road was closed. Or I could literally see down the road that it was, like, water streaming over the road. So I wasn't going to go down there. Anyway, that's all in the past. Eventually, uh, of course, we did manage to get back on the road. And you've been seeing videos from me now. And, you know, thankfully I get back into that groove again. Because uh, that's really where I'd like to be. Um... So what about going forward? So uh, the, the so currently, like I say, I'm uh, just a little bit east or a little bit west of uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota. And uh, what I'm going to do is I have to I'm going to go back to Grand Forks. I need to stop at the Walmart there and, and uh, supply up a little bit. I've got a five night stay up at Icelandic State Park. Really interested in seeing what that's like. Have a very special um, tour that I'd like to take while I'm in that area and uh, that would be a, a featured video I'm sure and then I'm gonna kind of like continue a trek westerly across I don't know what it looks like on the camera for you uh, westerly <laughs> whichever is westerly uh, across North Dakota across northern North Dakota uh, but then I'm going to, so I'm going to stop in the Turtle Mountains, uh, check out Lake Metagoshi, and, um, and um, I'll probably just Wally Dock at a, at a place there. Uh, or, I don't know, I, I might have gotten a place there, I'm not sure. Um, uh, oh, another stop, which is in the Turtle Mountains, uh, the International Peace Garden. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to stop there. Uh, and I do have a, a couple nights stay at a, a park that's a part of that International Peace Garden, which is right on the Canadian-U.S. border. Uh, so thankfully I have my passport and everything's good. Um, so again, a more uh, uh, northerly trek across North Dakota until we get around the Minot area, because I'm going to dip down to Minot. So I lived in Minot for a couple of years while I was in the Air Force back in the late 70s. And I'm going back to see uh, that area again. It's been many years since I've been there. And uh, looking forward to seeing what's going on. There's been so many changes in North Dakota since I was there in the late 70s, right? We found the whole, you know, fracking fields uh, up in northwestern North Dakota. Uh, which I guess has not been, you know, a great thing. It's been great economically, I'm sure, for North Dakota, but it hasn't necessarily been great from a societal point of view. Um, I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to see. Uh, and then, uh, the, once I'm uh, done kind of uh, checking out the uh, Minot area and the place where I was uh, stationed while I was in the Air Force here in North Dakota, we're going to head into Montana. And I'm going to take a more northerly track across Montana as well. And um, thinking that I'd like to make it as far west as like Bozeman, Montana. Uh, because, you know, you got to go and see where, as uh, legend will have it, uh, warp drive and uh, first contact <laughs> first happened, right? If you're into the whole Star Trek universe. Uh, so that's kind of the plan. Now, w you know, once I manage to get that far, if, if I do, then it's going to be turning around and uh, kind of heading back towards Wisconsin because we've got an election coming up, and I do believe in voting in person in this particular election. It's a very important one uh, for this country, and so I'm not going to play games with uh, mail-in ballots. If I could even figure out how to get one on the road, I don't really believe in mail-in ballots anyway. 
Uh, there are potentially some good reasons for it. If you're in the military, for example, as, as uh, you know, I've kind of already been alluding to uh, for me in a previous life, and you're away from your home of record, and there's just no way that you can get to your home of record, th then I could, you know, certainly see it. But mail-in ballots for the sake of uh, having the convenience of not going to a, uh, to a poll? Yeah, no. Anywho, um, the other thing is, is I may have to start heading back a little bit earlier than I would like because uh, we're talking about the northern tier of states and their state parks are going to start shutting down uh, after September is over, right? Because October's starting to get cold and not all that many people are wanting to um, camp at that point. Uh, we sh could get into some freezing temperatures this far north and uh, many of the parks are probably shutting down their water systems and probably when that happens the entire park uh, closes down. Uh, so uh, maybe not though. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe some will stay open and uh, st still maintain electric service but you just can't get any water. So I mean that's a possibility and that would be fine too. But anyway that's kind of the plan and so we'll see how that plays out. And, uh, and I think we've got some really excellent upcoming videos. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon.